Thank you. Just go straight down. Okay. It's supposed to be the exit that way. Yeah. There is, and it is the lost and found stuff on the lobby level, right? Right by, there's a door, actually. Okay, and there's a door with the buzzer, and it's actually the lost and found of the group side. Okay, well, if they don't come back in a few minutes, I figured that would be the best thing. Sure. You're welcome. Thank you. And Alexa Pearson is a direct experiencer and has a lot of remembering of her off-planet family, her star family, and her experiences there. And she gets direct transmissions, communications, and information that she's meant to come here and share to facilitate our ascension process. So Alexa, can you share? Of course you. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with and as I gaze out into the audience and I look at you, I do not see the avatar that you meticulously chose prior to your incarnation, because I know for a fact that you did. What I see is the divine <coughs> fire, the beautiful fractal of source, the creator energy that lies within you. And that is ascension. It already exists within you, that you will slide into when you do the work. I did come into this planet with full cosmic consciousness. I remember my family, I remember, thank you, I remember um, all the beings I am and I exist simultaneously in that space in other realities. I remember my missions, my travels, I have relationships, the feelings that are associated with all of that. And people ask me, well, when did all that start? I didn't have a choice. And they trained me in science and that's where I come from. That part of the puzzle for me is scientific. Yes, I've had these experiences with off-planet beings, but that's not my frame of reference. That's not the exciting part to me. It's the science of ascension and how you get there. You can have a long arc, and that's your choice, or you can have a direct slingshot into that space. There's no judgment on either. And the science starts with you, with yourselves. You are part of a system. You are part of a human system that is beholden to the Earth, that is also a second system that's beholden to the planets, which is to the sun, which is to the galaxy, and the so on and so forth, so forth to the Godhead. And that Godhead is living within you. That is what I see, flaming and burning when I look out at you. So that's the micro to the macro. Let's reverse it. Let's go back to you. All of, the, all of those systems are equal. It's scaled up. But it's all equal. You're all the same. You're the same as that planet. You're the same as the central source sun. And you are the godhead of yourselves. Have you ever tried talking to yourselves, honoring them? That's where ascension starts. Consciousness moves through your brain into your body, and DNA will broadcast it out. That is the avatar. That creates the avatar that you chose again, back to self, and it's going to hit the veil. It's going to, every one of those cells is going to hit the veil of amnesia. It's up to you to step in to that space where you dissolve that memory loss, and you can activate that. And there's many, many different ways to activate that. All five of us have different opinions on how to do it, and it's beautiful. So don't believe me or not, you don't have to believe anything I say about the aliens. But let's look at the science because it's totally up to you. You can choose to step into that hologram of divine light. It's up to you and your story is required. I just hope to inspire you with my own story so that you can kick the door down into your own magnificent reality. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. And that's Seam Harriman. He is a brilliant, cutting-edge physicist that spent over 30 years exploring that lens of the universe. But really, he's exploring spirituality and documenting how all of the universe is connected and we are one. 
and he's also on his own spiritual journey. So he's not just a mind figuring it all out. He is a being in the spiritual process in the truly the sense of the word. So Nassim, what is your amazing viewpoint on what's going on? Well, it's great to be here. Um, I'm glad to hold this book and maybe to give a little bit more of the male perspective on things. <laughs> Uh, being a scientific um, mind and, and, you know, doing hard science, um, you know, when you do hard science, and I, and I certainly have done so throughout the years, um, you, there is something remarkable that happens. And that is, is that if you're completely honest about the process that you're ongoing as you're doing research, um, there's a point where, you know, if you're if you're truly a seeker of truth, right? Where you it, the 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 scientific approach um, kind of balance over, like cross over to a gut feeling, a scientific you know intuition, a, a place where all possibility emerge, where you know. You, you are writing quantum physics equation and you're realizing that like an electron could be anywhere in the universe at any time, you know, like all these things are starting to like, and if you allow it to open, if you allow it to like, you know, if you let go of the need to quantify just in that moment, like you might quantify later, which is critical, right? Which is critical because I think a lot of what the ladies on the panel are talking about is actually <laughs> physics that is not quite well understood. Um, when, when, when you let go of the need to quantify it in that moment, you get to open up to a whole new world, you know, um, to a whole world of possibilities that eventually start to, to have a relationship to the physical world. So for, for me, personally, it was, um, it was in, um, you know, I was in my van, very uh, isolated, doing a lot of research for five years, uh, climbing every day, you know, being in nature, um, and uh, being um, very, you know, within myself in continuous contemplation and meditation and intention of, of uncovering the mystery of the material world. And, you know, in those moments, you had moments of illumination, moments of great, you know, revelation, um, which to me relates to what you guys are describing as a, as a Benson. Um, and, and, you know, and, and there was physical manifestation of, of these moments. So there was like uh, moments of, of glowing blue and, you know, all kinds of things were happening my body, to my environment, and, um, and so it was, it was very profound, and as I wrote the physics, um, as I wrote and, and as I understood deeper and deeper the mysteries of gravity and mass and electromagnetism and, and, and magnetism and so on, I realized that which you know at the same was a parallel research I was doing um, was a state of mind right in which um, there was an opportunity to connect with a, a, a source of information within me that was not localized that, it, that was non-linear that was non-local information was available and as I and, and as I realized that, I realized that there was that there was an analog in the physics. That is that you know entanglement, the structure of space time, that that um, that uh, that the universe is like an information highway, an information network, non-local network, and that there's an a, that there's application to that information network that has to do with controlling gravity. And that's when I realized that what ancient civilization talked about, 
and I was studying ancient cessation and, and anthropology as well, um, about this moment in history where humanity was going to ascend was not just in the concept and the interpretation that's typically given that it was going to ascend in its consciousness or in its awareness, but it was coupled with that the technology uh, to control gravity was going to become available because of this higher understanding, this higher awareness, bringing new understanding of the physical world that was going to give us the capacity to literally get off the surface, which is critical for our evolution, literal ascension. So for me, that's what it means. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Nassim. It's so helpful to have all the perspectives on this, because we are all of that. So what I'd love to do is widen the lens now. Hello, America. Do you have a product or a service? Would you like to increase your business, earn customer loyalty, spread patriotism, and thank our veterans for the service to our country? You can do all that by joining Supporting Our Servicemen, a 501c3 dedicated to helping and thanking our veterans. Please join today at ilovesos.org.